Here are 10 quick tips for Final Cut Pro that you'll probably wish you knew sooner because they're going to save you a ton of time. Kicking things off right away with tip number one, let's say you have a bunch of clips on top of each other that you want to extend the duration of, like these two video clips, the two titles and an adjustment layer. Instead of dragging each one out one by one, you can select all of the clips hit Ctrl D to change the duration, and then hit the plus key to add time. And let's add four seconds and zero zero frames. That extends all of the clips by exactly four seconds. But if you don't know exactly how long you want to extend the clips by, then you can extend it by longer than you think you need to. Let's say 10 seconds and zero zero frames. Then you can scroll to where you want it to end and hit the shortcut option and the right square bracket to trim all of those selected clips to the playhead. The next tip I have for you is a two-in-one tip. You may or may not already know that if you have a music track on your timeline, you can hit the R key to activate the range tool, click and drag to make a selection, and then you can increase or decrease the volume by clicking and dragging on the volume line on the audio. But what if you need to do that multiple times? Instead of repeatedly creating the selection with the range tool and trying to get the levels perfect, you can use the range tool to select that group of keyframes, then hit Option Shift C to copy those keyframes, move forward, and with the clip selected, you can hit Option Shift V to paste those keyframes as many times as you want. You can, of course, hit R to select the range tool again and select the keyframes to adjust the timing. Matching colors between clips can be time consuming, especially if you use a lot of stock footage where the colors are all over the place. To quickly match colors, first grade the initial shot. In this case, I just have a color curves adjustment here for contrast, a custom LUT, and a color wheels adjustment to boost the saturation. Select that first clip and hit Option G to create a compound clip. Then select the next clip and hit Command Option M to add a match color effect to the clip. Scrub through the timeline to find the compound clip you just created and select a frame before selecting Apply Match. You'll notice that these clips now match a lot better. You might want to refine the match a bit. In this case, I'll add a color curves adjustment to get better contrast in the second shot. If you don't create a compound clip, when you select a frame to match, it's going to ignore all the effects you've applied and it will match to the ungraded footage. The next tip is all about removing effects. Let's open up this compound clip we already have here and you can see we have three effects applied to the clip. The slowest way to remove the effects is to manually click on each one and delete them. A faster way that you might already know is to hit Command Shift X, which is the shortcut to remove attributes. But what you might not know is that there's a faster way to only select the effects and to deselect the other attributes like position, scale, and spatial conform, for example. You can, of course, click on each attribute to deselect them and then remove them, but you can also hold down the Option key and click on Effects to deselect everything but the effects. Then just select Remove. This is a super quick one. If you are editing a title template and you're changing colors, instead of trying to color pick the exact same color on multiple color swatches or trying to copy color codes, simply get the color right on one of them and then click and drag the swatch onto another swatch to copy and paste the color. This one actually saves you more time than you think. If you find yourself constantly changing how titles look and you often make the same kind of changes to the titles, then this one's going to save you a ton of time. I often create editing notes for myself using titles and I use titles instead of markers for this because I can set the duration and use it as a placeholder. So let's start by hitting Ctrl T to create a title. Let's type add fast paced B-roll montage here and then let's customize the text. I can change the font, the size, the tracking and the baseline to keep it at the bottom over here. You can change the color if you want to. What I like to do is add an outline, which I will make black, and I'll increase the blur and the width values to five. This way, the text is legible on top of light or dark footage. When I'm happy with it, I'll go over to the top here and I'll click on the drop down area and select Save All Format and Appearance Attributes. Now, if I add a new title using Control T and I change the text on this one to add screen recording here, I can then select my text preset from the drop down menu and it saves me from having to repeat those steps or from having to find a previous instance of that title on my timeline to copy and paste it. If your title presets get messy, you can navigate to this path to go and find your titles in Finder and then you can delete them or create categories by adding folders. 
Let's say you've created a cool title preset, either one of your own or you've used a template like this one from Motion VFX's MKBHD pack and you've added your sound effects to it and you want to use it multiple times in your video. Instead of copying all of these different clips and layers every time you want to duplicate the title, you can select them and create a compound clip with the shortcut option G. I'll call this tip number one. I'll copy and paste this clip later in my timeline and if I open up the second compound clip and change the text, it will change in both instances of the compound clip. That's not what we want, so I'll undo that and instead, with the second instance of the compound clip selected, I'll head over to the clip menu and select reference new parent clip. You'll notice how the name of this compound clip has changed. I'll right click on it and rename the clip to tip number two. Then I'll open up the compound clip, change my text and head back to my timeline. Now I have two instances of the same compound clip where the sound effects are the same, but the text is different. And I can repeat that process as many times as I need to. This next tip is going to save you a lot of time if you find yourself repeating the same steps on similar footage across different edits. For example, on my talking head footage, I have a color curves effect for contrast, a color wheels effect to boost the saturation, another color wheels effect to create a vignette around me, and then a subtle sharpen effect. To save time repeating these steps on future edits, I can click on save effects presets over here at the bottom of the inspector window. I'll call it talking head, I'll make sure all of my effects are selected and then I'll create a new category name. I'll call it one custom presets and then save the preset. I put the one in there so that it appears at the top of my effects browser and then when I work on the next video, I can just double click on that preset to apply it. When you change the scale and position of a clip or crop a clip, you might be used to adjusting the sliders in the inspector window or even clicking on the drop down arrow at the bottom of the viewer window to adjust those parameters. But there is a quicker way. You can simply right click on the clip in the viewer window to adjust your transform, crop and distort parameters. When you're done, you can click on the done button or hit the return key to go back to editing. You might notice that I have this black bar on top here because I didn't position my clip to the edge of the frame properly. In this case, it's pretty obvious, but if your footage is dark, it's sometimes easy to overlook that. This also happens when you bring in clips that have different aspect ratios to your timeline and you get these bars on the top and the bottom of the clip. A quick setting you can change to make spotting these black edges easier is to go to Final Cut Pro, Settings, Playback, and you can change the player background from black to checkerboard. Now you can easily see when your clips need to be adjusted. In this case, I just need to move this clip up a little bit. For a clip that has a different aspect ratio, instead of scaling up, you can scroll down to the spatial conform settings and change the type from fit to full to fill the frame from edge to edge. If you enjoyed these 10 quick tips, then you need to watch this video next where I discuss the 10 common beginner video editing mistakes to avoid.